Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be testing the premium features of the photogrammetry app Kiri Engine, which lets you take up to 200 photos to generate a 3D model. I've come across a problem that doesn't have an off-the-shelf solution, but combining Kiri Engine, some 3D modeling, and 3D printer, I found an elegant solution. I have a hose faucet outside that comes through a stone wall and has become loose over time. I want to secure it, but can't find any off-the-shelf solutions that would fit the stone facade. I thought that if I had a really good 3D scan of the stone, I could 3D print a flange to fit around the faucet to hold it in place. I started a new scan in Kiri Engine and took 200 photos of the faucet from different angles. I just clicked as fast as my iPhone would allow. I chose FBX for the format and high for quality. A short time later, the 3D model was done and I emailed myself the download link. Let's import it and take a look. So I made a folder called Kiri, so I can put all of my downloads in that. I have a 3D prints uh, project folder and I did a, a, a faucet in the backyard so let's do the front yard which I haven't done yet so here's the FBX that I downloaded 35 megabytes seems about right click import and the texture is inside this folder the FBM folder and this is an 8k uh, texture so it's pretty big let's take a look import so the default scale is going to be very large. It also comes in with all of these cameras. I don't need the cameras uh, for this. I'm just going to select them and delete them. And then we'll scale this to one so it's easier to work with. Like that. And now if I press 6, I should see with the texture. Now when you first bring in uh, FBXs or any model, usually uh, it comes in with a material in fong form, which is kind of hard to look at. So I'm going to change it to Lambert. It's easier to look uh, at a scan that way. And also our color profile here is set to ACES SDR. I want to change it to Untone Mapped. It's going to be easier to look at uh, this texture. You can see it's going to get a little brighter. And here is the scan. And this looks really, really good. I mean, I've used the uh, really expensive software for photogrammetry and uh, I rarely get this type of quality especially with only 200 photos and it seems like 200 photos is a lot it's not I mean I've taken hundreds and hundreds of photos before uh, for photogrammetry but this is amazing it even got some bird droppings stuck to the stone here so what I want to do is I want to build a flange around here um, so that it fits perfectly around the stone. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to line this up in 3D space a little bit so that it kind of, uh, so I can kind of see what's going on because it's a little, uh, it's off center because there's no way to kind of register uh, your scans uh, unless you put some kind of registration marks, but let's, we don't need to worry about that here. Okay, so that's lined up. Uh, I want to get rid of extra geo that I don't need, like some of this extra stuff on the outside. I don't need it for this, for what I'm doing. So I'm going to select these faces and delete them. Like this, delete. And I don't need anything here. Also in height, we don't need that much either. So I'm only working, you know, with the faucet here. So I'm going to delete this much down here. So less geo, simpler model, easier to work with. Now for scale, there's a couple things you can do. You can measure individual features. So what I've done before is I would look at different parts so you can find like a little white splotch here, one there and use digital calipers to measure. Uh, and then all you need to do is, let's say if I make a, a cube like this, when I just isolate it, if I snap a uh, my vertex to that corner, I can then snap it to this little white dot here and then line it up to this dot here. Now all I need to do is because it's a cube and it's in centimeters, if I take this scan and drop it inside the cube, just in the outliner, I can then scale this cube to the proper uh, measurement that I made and then that will um, and that will set it to the proper scale. And then when you're done, you just take the model out of the cube and delete the cube. But because I made uh, another scan of this, I'm going to measure it slightly differently. And I'm going to bring in the flange that I made previously. So it is in scenes faucet. So I'm going to import that. 
And so this is the previous scan. I'm gonna hide, I don't need any of this stuff. So here's my previous scan. And this one is already scaled properly. So all I need to do is now match uh, my old one to this one and that's it. So this is the one I did in the backyard and now I have to do the one in the front yard. And then all I need to do is just scale them to each other and that should be done. And what I can actually do is scale the, the pipe to the nut here. Right, so if I move my pivot here, I can then snap it there and then try and line it up. I can see that the pipe is pointing down. So if I want to fix that, I can just bend this down a little bit like that. All right, so, so here's what I want to do. I want to actually move this, uh, th this, flat, uh, this uh, faucet back on the pipe. So I'm going to cut the pipe, move this back, and I want to build a flange in here. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just make a cylinder. And when you're modeling for uh, 3D printing, uh, like a lot of the bevels and quads, they, they don't really matter. What matters when you're modeling for uh, 3D printing is that it's watertight. That is all. So I want to make this about that big. I want to make sure it's going through all the way like that. I want to give it a lot of divisions. Set it to 64. And then let's uh, start figure this out. So I want to place this at the center where the pipe comes out, like there. So that's where I want the flange to go. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to hold this uh, hex nut so that uh, I can use that this flange to actually screw this uh, on and off if I need to, and also it's going to hold it from turning uh, when I'm uh, when it's nice and tight against the wall. Okay, so maybe a little smaller should be a good size. And then I'm going to take uh, my scan and duplicate it, and then I'm going to cut off the sort of faces and just cut this off like that. Then I'm going to select uh, the other one, select this again, then shift select, delete the other one. So now I have uh, the pipe and the flange separate. So I'm going to cut the pipe back uh, in the real one about here. So now what I need to do is I need to cut out a hole for this hex nut. So it's a six-sided uh, object, so we just make a cylinder with six subdivisions. I'm going to rotate it like this. I'm going to place it here and then try to line it up. Now I'm going to uh, use it for Boolean, but the problem is if I Boolean from this, this has way less geometry than that. So I'm going to turn on wireframe and then I'm going to use add divisions. So under edit mesh, add divisions and give it a couple times until it kind of matches like that. So we'll save that, leave that there. Now I want to make this into a better looking shape. So I'm going to take this uh, edge here and bevel it. Better. And now I need to figure out where I'm going to add screws. So I want to add screws that can go into the grout. So the way you can do this is you can dr use a hammer drill, drill a hole in the grout and put in a plastic insert, uh, an anchor, and then put some screws in there. And I have some outdoor screws that are uh, beveled. So let's make a little screw hole. And you can adjust this uh, any way you want uh, later. Uh, basically, if the print is, doesn't, if it doesn't fit right, you can always fix it and redo it. Um, you can also measure it. So that's always a good thing to do. I'm going to hide this so I can see where I'm placing them. So I'm going to do it right in the middle. And then if I want to place the other one on the other side, what I can do is I can freeze the transformations, uh, move my pivot to the center, duplicate it, and then flip this one to, to negative like that. 
All right, now we also don't need an inside because you don't want to print this really uh, like thick and heavy. So we need to extrude this. So I'm going to freeze it and then click extrude and use thickness inside like that. And the thickness here, you know, the the thicker it is, the stronger it's going to be. So I don't need it to be super thick. Uh, I want the this part, the inside, to be very strong. So I'm going to make that thicker. So I want to select these vertices. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting the center vertex and then shift uh, greater than or shift period. And I can move this over. If I unhide uh, the, the faucet, I can see how far back I need to go to hold that uh, nut there. Something like that. Okay. And I want to make sure that these are going through. And we need to reverse the normal, so go to the uh, display. And, oh, sorry, mesh display and click reverse. All right. So now we're ready to do our booleans. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, these two and combine them like that. Then uh, select uh, this one and so select this surface, then that surface, and then try the boolean. I always forget the order of operation. So I'm going to try a couple different things. So I did difference and that worked. So basically you select the first, the main object, then the object you want to remove and then click difference. I can see what happened. We have screw holes here. I can then select this and this piece and click uh, difference and that's going to make that hex hole. Now the best part is this. I'm going to duplicate the surface so I have uh, one saved and hide it and then we'll select this surface, clear history, then that one and then click difference. See what happens. That's it. So this happens because the normals are locked. So you press the unlock normals, mesh display, and click unlock normals. There you go. Clear history. And this is ready for 3D printing. It was that easy. And this should fit perfectly into the uh, into the brick. So now uh, to send it to the printer, it's really easy. Because we're uh, working in centimeter scale, uh, 3D printers are usually in millimeter scale. So we need to, uh, we'll need to scale it after we send it. I like to keep working in centimeters and then I just do the adjustment in the slicer. So I use a Prusa printer and uh, the Prusa slicer is really good. So I'm going to show you how to use that. First, let's export this. So file, export selection. And I'm going to export this into, um, let's see, prints. And I'm going to call this faucet front dot stl. We're going to export it as stl. Th that format works really well with 3D printers. Export. And then let's open up a slicer. But here I'm using a Prusa slicer and uh, Let's import the STL import. Prints, front faucet. You can see it's really tiny. So I'm gonna set my scale to a thousand, just on one of them, hit enter. So this is the proper scale. Then I'm gonna use this place on face. You press this and then I'm gonna print on this side like that. This is how it will print. And infill of 20 is good. And uh, I'm gonna keep the quality at 20 millimeter at speed and uh, let's slice so you press the slice button on the bottom here that's it simple as that here's our slice that's what we're going to print it's going to take about four hours and then to send it to the printer you just click export g code and i'm going to place this into my project folder and 
pressing on prints. So it makes this G code file. You just take this file. If your printer uses USB, you place it into the USB drive and then hit print or you uh, on a memory card or whatever, or if it's using Wi-Fi, you can do it that way as well. If you like this video please hit the like button uh, leave a comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time